Thank you for the opportunity to present. Just want to take a minute to acknowledge Dr. Vieth. So in 1996, he gave the SVS presidential address commemorating the 50th anniversary of the SVS. And he gave a lecture entitled Charles Darwin and Vascular Surgery, where he remarked that vascular surgery is differentiating from its ancestor, general surgery, and that vascular surgeons need to acquire endovascular skills to survive. So let's take a moment to thank Dr. Veith for his vision and leadership. Starting with 100 attendees, the meeting has grown in size, scope, and international presence to 5,000 attendees and 600 faculty members, with an emphasis on international faculty and attendees, comprising about 40%. And the World Federation has been an international platform for exchange of scientific, educational, and political matters related to management of vascular diseases ever since the inaugural meeting in Madrid in 2007. Looking at the scientific aspect, we need to ensure that new knowledge is disseminated throughout the world. Dr. Sillison said. And similarly, with development of new technologies and treatment, that we make sure to continue new products on the market demonstrate value. And Dr. Shah, who says that WFVS is a collaborative effort to organize the vascular societies. And so here we stand. I'm gonna present an overview of research strategies to address the global burden of vascular disease and give some examples of vascular collaborative research and discuss the role of WFVS in the next steps. So the burden of vascular disease around the world, how do we better understand the question? We have current research methods, including randomized trials, registries, and collaborative research organizations. Well, what is collaborative research? Important scientific issues or innovative technologies can often be understood by bringing together a team of researchers from different backgrounds. And the merging of ideas can achieve incredible goals, as many of, the room, and many of you in the room um, have been a part of. Collaborative research involves real-world data, and the findings are representative of wider populations, meaning the results are generalizable and relevant to more patients. The scale of collaborative research studies can efficiently generate high quality perspective data while maintaining a low burden of commitment for individual collaboratives. Research using data that are many years old is increasingly lacking relevance and collaborative research prioritizes tangible results on behalf of patients. Collaborative research studies are multi-center and often multi-country with the diversity of patients typically from different resource settings and socioeconomic status. So let's start with randomized trials. What question do we want to ask? They're often expensive. Who pays for it? Voyager is an example of an international randomized trial that worked, acknowledging that it required a substantial, a substantial pharmaceutical industrial support. And then look at the paclitaxel drug coated balloon trials. This is an example of a group of trials that were flawed and all the work that registries and other researchers needed to do to help understand the holes in the data. So randomized trials are often impractical for the type of research we're talking about. Registries have a role. They're typically high quality and well established giving a snapshot of the real world. And for some registries, all patients who undergo a procedure are entered into the registry, so there's less bias. The advantages of collaborative research organizations, they're nimble, can design a study specifically to answer a question, move quickly, share the work, and share the acknowledgement for the work for the people that are doing the data entry and, and doing the heavy lifting. And here are a few examples that I'll go through. So Vascunet started in 1997, and it comprises more than 40 members from 26 different countries. 
and many of you either in the room or are working with people who are part of Vascunet. So it's a very important organization. Vern started in 2013 facilitating research really heavy among trainees, teaching residents and med students how to participate and be part of the research process. The VLFDC um, involves over 75 institutions and has been a real playmaker here. And the VEDS Collaborative with the PI Dr. Shaloub um, is making a real impact for patients with vascular Ehlers-Danlos. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk a little bit about our organization and how we started. So a brief timeline tracking back to 2020 will show just how quickly the pandemic um, encapsulated all of us. So March 4th, the first person tested positive in our state in Colorado. And by March 16th, our whole um, operating room and hospital was in, essentially shut down. So in the, in the course of less than two weeks. So we developed a collaborative research organization over 238 sites, 48 countries. And here's all the work that we did just to be able to start collecting the data. And here are the countries involved. And here are the members involved in de designing the data collection tools in the collaborative effort here to make this possible. And the team involved at University of Colorado, and the advisory board, and the steering committee, three data collection hubs for this multi-center prospective cohort study. So we found a significant association between diabetes and adverse events in patients with CLTI. We're not here to talk about that. We also did an audit looking at vascular surgeons around the world participating in pulmonary embolism response teams in the, the challenges in the road ahead. <clears throat> so there are downside to registries. They're slow to adapt. Data may not be granular enough to answer your question. They're pre-existing fields inflexible, and run by a select few with interests and expertise, and the people entering the data and doing other important aspects of the work are rarely acknowledged. Um, the downside of collaborative research organizations sometimes can move too quickly, affecting the quality of the data, with variable data quality and oversight and selection bias. So in summary, like open and endovascular surgeons, using all tools available to answer the question, Collaborative research organizations and registries are complementary. Role is to establish a premier research organization to address the burden of vascular disease around the world. And the World Federation of Vascular Societies can play a vital role in making this vision a reality. Next steps include build the infrastructure, have a self-sustaining funding mechanism, build trust to freely and openly share ideas, and that will allow all of us to ask the questions and get the answers. Thank you.